Let's start again. Hadron physics and 3D dualities. Axion physics. I'm going to talk about the axion physics. <laughs> and hadron physics is tightly related to the axions. But this talk, we don't have axion. <laughs> some, some QCD. But anyway, I'm trying to understand the hadron physics by using some recently proposed 3D dualities. So there's some, some relation between the 4D physics and 3D physics. That's something I want to talk about. But as I said, uh, uh, starting from QCD in four dimensions, there's a fancy term called theta term. This causes a problem in the standard model. That's a strong CP problem. We know that this is small, that this theta, term, theta value is small, but we don't know why. And uh, this is something fancy because this only appears in, a, in this uh, uh, what, topological way in, in the quantum physics. So that's the something fancy and before puzzled many things about this uh, related to theta. So there are many mistakes about theta. Uh, by the way, this, this, this introduction is really for the axiom physics and which is not related to <laughs> the main part. But anyway, so, so that, 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 there are many mistakes associated with theta. First, the, the, is theta physical? That's the same question as with Apcock massive or not. That's the question. Concludes. Uh, people think that it's, uh, it's massive, but I'm not sure. But anyway, that's the thing I'm working on. And also, the, what happens at theta equal to pi is also interesting. And people actually speculate many things about theta equal to pi, which is totally different from theta equal to zero part. And also, at the, if you turn on the temperature, the, uh, if, what, what happens to the theta dependence of the theory? That is also not conclusive. People think that the, uh, you want natural, which is anomalous, maybe it covers when chiral symmetry is restored by temperature. But I think most of the people think that the instanton still persists at the very high temperature, so that you want action must be broken, keep broken. But some lattice people say that the, there's a tendency of really this theta dependence disappear, like action must really drop suddenly at the temperature of chiral phase change. So this kind of thing is still controversial. And also, if you change the, the theory from this is three cases to the theta dependence is very different. It could be very different. So that, that kind of mystery is uh, still, uh, you know, remains on the market. And uh, I, I've been worked on many stuff associated with that. For example, the, this is the axiom mass temperature dependence of the axiom. This is something you know, I talked about last time, I think two years ago, um, that on the lattice, which actually follows the line of instant on chiral So the instant seems to be good. But this is without clocks, so no chiral symmetry is in it. So we have to update on this uh, by including clock mass. And also, also the, the clock mass dependence on the axiom mass, that is, it's supposed to be, you know, axiom mass should be zero at the clock mass, zero point, but whether or not if, if this line here is goes through this zero point is controversial. Yeah. Also, the instant on calculus and the lattice simulation, you can see the very good agreement of high temperature, but low temperature is very different. That kind of thing I have to do. So the, but today, actually, I decided not to talk about this thing, but something related to that uh, is, is that some exotic possibility of hadron properties in QCD based on the consideration of the theta. So I, I'm, I'm going to talk about some, uh, you know, the background of theta term and the behavior of QCD we will start with this talk. And uh, it is motivated by the recent discussion in 3D QCD, where the uh, various dualities are proposed. That means uh, different kinds of theory actually gives you the same physics that has been discovered in three-dimensional theory. So that would be very interesting if you could promote to the fourth dimension analysis. And uh, so let me start with a review of 3D world, because 
sometimes it is not so familiar, uh, and uh, it is sometimes counterintuitive if you know too much about four dimensional world. And uh, there's actually a nice review by David Tong online. Online means you can just find on, on the web. And I saw many things in there, so I just review the review. Okay. And uh, the one of the fascinating duality in 3D is this called this uh, something called particle vortex duality. So this is it is a very nice duality. I mean non-trivial duality where the one one of one side of the theory is just scalar, complex scalar with potentials. And the other side is complex scalar with potential with gauge photon. And people claim that those are the same theory. How come? <laughs> it's a totally different theory. But if you look at the degree of freedom, it looks similar. First of all, uh, on this side, you have global U1 symmetry. You know, this, uh, this phi has charge 1. And this side, that symmetry is gauged, so there's no global symmetry. So it looks like it doesn't match from that already. But actually, there's a topological symmetry you want symmetry on this side, where, where the charge is actually a magnetic charge. So the, in 3D, you can write down this operator, which is you know, the current, which can be total current. And this is, is obviously conserved. So this, there's a global symmetry on this side once you have gauge field. So there's a U1 global symmetry here and U1 global symmetry here. So at that, that point, you know, uh, it passes the, the requirement that global symmetry must be same. And second, the degree of freedom is also the same. So if you take this m squared to be positive, the degree of freedom is 5. And of course, it doesn't match to the positive value of this m squared because the degree of freedom is now a photon. But uh, if you take negative value of this m squared, then the, this side, what you get is that the okay, Higgs mechanism happens and the photon is gone. But there's a vortex uh, degree of freedom appears. That's a U1 spontaneously broken, U1 gauge symmetry spontaneously broken, you get the, the vortex, the stable topological object. That carries a topological charge one, and that matches to that to that this degree of freedom. This has global symmetry charge on the global symmetry, and the vortex is charged on the global symmetry. And if you take this one negative, what you get is vortex again. Okay. But this vortex has infinite energy because it, there's no gauge field associated with this. In four dimensions, it's a global stream. And this is, so, so this has infinite energy. That means it's con confined. Vortex must associate with the anti-vortex. Okay. And uh, the same thing is happening for positive m squared, where this uh, uh, degree of freedom is photon and phi and phi. Because of the electromagnetic interaction, actually electric interaction, uh, the phi is confined. There's a low potential. So there's a confined particle this side and a confined particle that side. So that's the theory is that the same physical system. Okay, so I can yes. ask, so in, the, in the top line, if you have spontaneous symmetry breaking, mm -hmm. I assume, so the particle you're talking about is the, the, the Nabu Goldstone boson. Yes or no? Uh, this side. No, uh, well, the, the particle. Side. Yeah, the particle on the but top. Particle, this is positive mass. Yeah. It's positive mass. Yeah, so that oh, I see. particle is just okay, positive. So then it's a positive mass, and that's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a massive thing. Mm -hmm. But down here on the, on the dual side, mm -hmm. all the particles, the particle, so first of all, the photon is massive, Yeah. But, but you're saying it's gone, so somehow you're taking a limit where the photon is more massive than the vortex. vortex. Mm -hmm. So first of all, why the vortex has, I see the vortex is a point, so that's why it has finite mm -hmm. mass. But why is the, the gauge, the massive gauge boson heavier? You're taking E large or something? I see, it's below the scale, E is a scale, so you're below the scale E. And so you're saying yeah, yeah. that the, uh, the, the vortex on the lower theory is lighter than the gauge boson. Well, actually, the, the exact duality must happen at the fixed point, so everything is actually massless. Okay, yeah. so uh, okay, so that's sort of my question. Yeah, Usually, yeah. we only get the tune that. So you actually have to tune this theory. Right. Yes. Both theories have to be tuned to that's a right. critical point. Mm -hmm. 
So a question, when both mass are zero, mm -hmm. so it seems to me that the degree of freedom doesn't match. No, no, at the fixed point. So, so we have to be on at the fixed point. So M is also related to the fixed point. If you fix M, you have to tune something. And uh, zero probably there's no fixed point. I see. Right. I mean, so, zero. Points, right? So, <laughs> so, so, so then at the fixed point, I mean, uh, okay. But anyway, so, so I just I want to say that. For the confined case, mm -hmm. is, is there a finite action solution for vortex, anti-vortex? No. Uh, no, 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 that's not because it's confined. Okay. So, uh, finite, you mean finite distance? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's just. Potential is log, logarithmic potential. It's just this vortex and that vortex pulled together as a you know, log, log potential. Typhoon and anti typhoon actually <laughs> pulled <it> together. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can get another graph <laughs> Okay, so you know, this is just to say that the three dimensions there's a peculiar, you know, thing that uh, the two different theory looks like describing the same physics. Too. And uh, the even more uh, funny thing happens if you add this charm Simon term in the action to the action. So the, this charm Simon term doesn't look like gauge invariant, and it is not gauge invariant actually. <laughs> but if you expo put exponential factor here and I here you get uh, this one to be gauge invariant. Because the, the gauge transformation gives you a two pi shift. So the, uh, the two pi shift in the exponential is nothing. So the, in that way, if this level k is integer, you get a, a gauge invariant theory. So this, uh, this is a special special thing which we don't know. We don't, it doesn't happen in even dimension. Just for, for odd dimension, we can write this kind. Or chance time, term. and uh, this time we don't have dimension for parameter. On the other hand, the, the QED, a gauge coupling in three dimension, has dimension. So at low energy, what happens is that this term dominates. If you had some, you know, max with time and chance time and time, the theory flows to the chance time and chance time and theory where the, this term dominates. And this term doesn't have metric, so it's topological theory. And even photon gets mass from, from this term. So this quadratic term gives you mass for photon. So the low energy effective there is nothing. <laughs> just gap. But the topological inf information remains. The, the observables are correlated as Wilson loops, like Wilson loop, Wilson loop, the expectation value actually is the leafing number. So that kind of uh, topological information uh, remains. What's the bungee cord for? What? The picture of bungee cords. The Wilson groups. The picture. The linking number of this one? Well, anyway, that's. <laughs> 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 no, no, anyway, so that once you draw some lines, you can get some number that is only depends on topology. If you change the size, it doesn't change. You know, that only depends on the topology. So, so that's the topological order. So, you know, it's, a, it's different from the usual gap space. It's, it's something remains, but still gap. No degree of freedom, but you have physics. Physics. <laughs> this is the Gauss linking number. For the U1 case, I don't know what's U1. Linking number. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> linking number. Yes. And some other peculiar thing of Chan Simon and the fermion is that uh, if you have fermions in the theory, and if you integrate out that fermion, charge the fermion, that shifts the charm time level. It is not quite surprising because this stuff this gives you a correction to the charm time level. But what's interesting is that the, the shift depends on the sign of the mass time of this fermion. So the sign is positive, it's a positive shift, negative, negative shift, and with a half. So, so it, I said that the charm time level must be uh, integers, but if you have fermions, it must be half integers. I mean, if you have odd, fer odd number of fermions, that must be you know, half integers. That's the correlative anomaly. But anyway, in 3D, fermion just doesn't, doesn't 
don't decouple, just doesn't you know, it, it, the, the, the sign of fermion mass, the information remains at low energy it, it, it is not familiar in volume. So these half integer level theories, do they have a definition apart from this fermion theory that you said? No, no, once you integrate that, the whole thing must be integer. So the k must be half integer if you, I mean, okay. if you integrate that. Those theories are anomalous. Yeah. Okay. So you it's have just the anomaly diagram in yes. three dimensions. Yes. Right. Okay. So yeah, it's called anomaly. But there's no chiral anomaly in three dimensions. So it's a parity. Right. Yeah, this term breaks parity. Yes. Cool. So actually, fermion must term breaks parity. So the fermion is charged under the gauge, mm -hmm. then the charge can be arbitrary, right? It is not true. In the if you want, then the charge can be arbitrary. Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, it's proportional to the charge square, I think. But then how does, it, how does the charge disappear from k plus or minus nf over k? No, I just assumed one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, charge must be integer, <laughs> first of all, for the U1 theory. Even more peculiar thing happens in, in if you have, you know, if you couple this matter to Chansan level. Ah, okay, already coupled, but, but anyway. So this is the action uh, for fermion gauge boson system in 3D. And if you, uh, at low energy, you can ignore this term because it's exponential. So the, the, this one and this one. Then if you look at the Gauss law constraint, differentiate with respect to A, A naught, what you get is, you know, the magnetic field from here, 0, 1, 2, this is magnetic field, and the electric field from, electric charge from here. So Gauss law constraint gives you, magnetic charge must be proportional to the, to the electric charge. So once you have electric charge here, there must be magnetic charge on it. So this is, you know, very different from the from the four-dimensional thing. So everything becomes tight. Okay, and uh, so it is proportional to the level k. So fermion is you have charged fermion but that's the magnetic. So then the the statistics gets very funny. So Let's take k equal to 1. Because k equal to 1, you get the magnetic charge associated with it. So if you change, interchange two fermions, you get the Haranoff bone phase. So that flips the statistics. The fermion becomes boson. Both obeys both statistics in this theory. And the boson obey fermion statistics in this theory. So this is. Uh, uh, complicated thing. So, and even k equal to 1, it's okay, but if you, you know, change to k equal to 2 or 3, you know, it's not even both are fermion statistics, some other statistics. You, know, you have to, you know, wind many times to get back to the same uh, phase. So, so Polyakov looked at that theory and the, uh, and uh, and uh, Conjecture that uh, maybe this uh, the theory with bosons is dual to fermions because this obeys fermion statistics, and it seems to be working very well. Again, the global symmetry of this system is topological charge, and the global symmetry of this system is just a fermion number, and that looks like a dual, a nice duality. So the you know once you have uh, chance I'm on time, the scalar theory and fermion theory can be related. So, uh, not even related to the same. <laughs> that, that, that Nobody proved that, that but <laughs> people believe that. So, this type of duality is actually promoted to 4D electric magnetic duality, S duality. That means, you know, magnetic charge is replaced by electric charge. That kind of duality you can actually get from connecting many 3D theory to get the 4D theory. So that kind of work, work has been done very recently. So it's, I think, interesting that the 3D theory may be something to do with the duality in 4D theory. And 3D duality uh, seems to be a base, can be a base of the, the understanding of 4D theory. So 
that stuff. And uh, recently, the, the duality in U1 is upgraded to this, this uh, extended to the non abelian edge theory, but probably not recently. This, the, the exact statement is, is uh, spelled out in this uh, uh, 15th paper. And uh, uh, so, so this is something, again, very interesting. Okay, look at the, the second line. You have like QCD-like theory, SUN and fermion theory is actually the same as UN theory with NF scalar series. The global symmetry is UNF here by rotating the fermion. UNF here. And uh, here we have SUN because U1 part is case. But again, the topological charge of this guy can be can match to this uh, UNF. This is SUNF times the topological charge is matching to this uh, UNF. So that's a interesting thing. And uh, this is based on the level one duality in time time series. So that this is a mathematical statement that must be correct. That is SUN chan Simon level K gives you the same result as uh, UK minus L theory. So this seems to be mathematically proved. So the, the duality is in the, in the topological field theory. And if you attach some matter fields to it, uh, there's some dual theory which is actually attaching matter is scalar here. So that kind of duality has been proposed. So that, that works, that duality level rank works even for capital N for, for little k equals one, so it would give you a Nabilian. Yeah, 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 that's right. right. So the one, 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 if you take one, 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 okay. you get the same one. Right, yeah. Okay. And uh, even recently it has been discussed that the if you do the this dual transformation twice, you get that this particle vortex duality. So that duality has a web. You have one duality, and you can, from starting from that duality, you can go to different duality, and uh, many dualities are related. That kind of uh, picture has been explored recently. So let's see what, what's going on. Still a review part, sorry, but uh, okay, SU, UMK is NF scalar. I just look at this theory. So we, if the gauge coupling is much smaller than the scalar mass, so that then they just scale a decouple, and low energy theory is just a chance Simon theory, you know, just topological theory. And by level of rank duality, we get the SUK minus M theory. So this is a true statement. Also, if the mass is small, much small, and negative, and then the, the, this gauge group is spontaneously broken, and uh, we are left with UN minus MF with level K theory, and again, this is dual to SUK, this theory. And uh, if you look at this side, the same thing happens. If the mass of fermion is positive, what you get is uh, NF over two shift, that you see this one. And if the mass of fermion is negative, this one is canceled, and you get this one. So in this way, you get the same effect in low energy theory, uh, in this theory and this theory. And the, the key is the level around duality. And both sides, as I said, already said that the same global symmetry is there. One side, we have UNF, and the other side, SUNF times topological charge. And uh, because of that, actually, uh, so the U1 part of this U, UNF symmetry is a value number, just changing all the fermion phase. And that value number is uh, identified with the topological charge here, the monopoles, uh, the monopole number, the magnetic charge is the charge. So the, the monopole and baryons are identified in both sides. The monopole here is baryon here. So that's the uh, relation in the three d dualities. The monopole was the vortex? Or? Monopole, uh, yeah, or just monopole. In CD, you can write a monopole operator by, by photon. And dualized photon, you have scalar and exponentiality, you get monopole operator. And that is has, that the same as the vortex? The same charge as vortex. But not the same as the vortex. Vortex is made of this scalar. And, and, and the gauge boson. But you can, just from gauge boson, you can. 
So that in any phase, you can write down the small numbers as an elementary in your freedom. Um, well, not the elementary, the vortex side. Sorry. I mean, when we matched the two theories, mm -hmm. we said the light degrees of freedom were the vortex. There was no light monopole degree of freedom. Ah. No, no, variants are not light. Uh, but anyway, at, at the fixed point, so the, I think this is the operator level matching. You, if you write down the QQQQ operator, the operator on this side must be a monopole operator. So that's, that's the statement. At the fixed point, this must be some CFT and uh, the, you know, the same dimension and same global charge operator must appear. I mean, on the fermion side, is the baryon, are the quarks confined? Uh, is chiral symmetry broken? Is the baryon massive? Mass uh, okay, that, that I'm going to talk about, but uh, in, in this example, it's just a couple. Uh, massive. No, I, I, I'm, yeah, I'll come to that. It, anyway, it's not confined phase, it's a topological phase. So that it's some, somewhat different phase. So this is the phase diagram. And uh, the example I, I told you, that there's a, it's a, let's, let's look at this uh, fermion size. Just a CNK with n fermions, we have a um, you know, mass term as a, as a Three parameters, and if mass is positive, you get this effective theory and this low energy effective theory, topological phase, and that is dual to this one. And uh, if it mass is negative, this is the theory, and that is dual to this one. And uh, because different theory, there must be some phase transfer here. And uh, that that the same physics is described by the Higgs mechanism of this three bosonic side. So that's the picture. And in this case, there's only one critical point. The CFT is here and the gap to gap. So that, that's the picture. Well, gap, but topology. And uh, global chiral symmetry, I mean, global symmetry is not broken anywhere. So, so but, what, what's massless at the critical point? Ah, for fermion size, it's fermion and global. I want the global is not massless, fermion. And boson side, I think this scales. But again, fermions are not quite fermions. Fermi statistics is not, you know, doesn't make sense with this level. So, so for the so same reason, you shouldn't really call that QCD3. <laughs> no, this is, this is definition. This is called QCD3. <laughs> <laughs> so at the critical point, the quarks yes. are massless. So the baryon is massless? Critical point, yeah. It's CFT, I think. Yeah. And so should I really think of naively if I have, if I see anything that has some SUNK in it, naively if I just set that K to zero, I don't have the churn Simon's term. Well, K equals zero is not allowed for this. Uh, Ah, okay, good. Because I'm wondering, because otherwise it seems like you would be getting weird dualities between right. things that do and do not have churn Simon's okay, term. So but there are actually inequalities that require the churn Simon's term yeah. to be zero on both sides. That guess, question right? is the reason exactly why these people think about the opposite uh, side. That the phase diagram must be different if you, if yeah. you don't satisfy that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's the speculation of these, you know, okay. of the cyber paper that, that the space diagram should be like this. The, the consistency with duality requires the, the two fixed points uh, or two critical points. Yeah. And the in between, the chiral symmetry, the, the flavor symmetry must be broken spontaneously. Mm -hmm. So there's a gap, gap, and the pion theory. A massless non gap theory in it. But, but now in this case we can take k equals zero? Yes. For k equal to zero, uh, you can take k equal to zero. So k equal to zero, you have I mean, this theory, and that is dual, dual to this one. And you can take k equal to zero, this 
for this is the concept space of uh, pions. K equals zero, you can take. And again, this side you can take K equals zero. So that by gluing these two, you know, critical points, you can get the, the consistent picture. So that if K, once you fix K, if you change the number of free bar, you know, large number of free bar, there's no chiral symmetry breaking, but fewer free bars, you get chiral symmetry breaking. Not chiral, it's free bar symmetry. Even if breaking happens. And the breaking pattern must be like that. This is the, the argument of uh, So we can also take K as NF over 2, so that one of those theories doesn't have the trans Simon's term? K, K equal to NF, but two cases, I think, the category is this one. So that is this picture. So then Marcus's problem happens. If K is NF over 2. Yeah. One theory doesn't have a turn Simon's term. Right. Uh, right. This here, it's not topological. It's a trivial gap. Oh, it's, it's, but it's U0. Never yeah. mind. Yeah. This gets negative if you go beyond. So that's the, the, the inconsistency. But if you glue this one, you can actually get the consistent So I looked at this diagram last year when Zoha talked about that the Bay Area whatever seminar at the San Francisco and, uh, and it, I thought this is pretty much related to the four dimensional theory because we know that there's some kind of symmetry breaking in four dimensional theory. So this must be something to do with our kind of symmetry. So I'd like to know whether this uh, interesting, these interesting 3D dynamics have something to do with our 4D world, and that gives you some insight of our uh, vacuum or uh, final temperature business. So from here, I'm going to talk about my stuff. So the, the, what I do is to, to consider the S1 compact file QCD. It is not our world, but anyway, we compact by one of the spatial dimension. And uh, not only that, I, I put a theta term, which is space dependent. So if you go to that extra compact dimension, the theta term changes. And uh, this term you can ignore for, for, for a moment. It's just theta term. So this is a spatial, the compact spatial direction, right. and you're in ordinary space time. Yes. Yeah. Not, for now. Not Euclidean space. Time. Sometimes, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> for, for now, yeah. No, no. It, it's just M3 times S1, Minkowski times S1. So the, uh, what's interesting is that this theta can have a winding number. So because it is S1 direction, and theta is an angle uh, variable, so you can go around this one, and theta cannot, it's not necessary to come back to the same point. Theta can be shifted by two pi times integer. That gives you the same, zero, uh, same point, so that you can actually glue, uh, have a winding of theta. So that gives you some uh, non-trivial non uh, background on this theory, on the QCD. So QCD, we are doing SUN gauge theory with NF favor. In the, in a four dimensional language. Okay? And uh, we can actually analyze this theory, and we know what happens actually, uh, at least for the large radius. Large radius is just our world. So that we know that the chiral symmetry is broken and the pions appear. That's the, that's the theory. And small radius we can also analyze because small radius is high energy. Gauge coupling is small, so we can just compact by part of the image. So the, this side and this side you can analyze uh, by using QCD or Tyler Lagrangian. Those are the, the limit. We know the effective theory in both sides, so we can just compact. So C type is coordinate dependent, means C type is axiom or something? You are considering axiom? Yeah, axiom background, but background. this is not dynamical, but uh, some axiom is winding the internal space. Yes. Axiom, yes, axiom. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> yes, So, and, uh, and 
small radius, what happens is that, uh, ah, okay, so this is, well, anyway, what, we, we can just do the KK decomposition and uh, look at the, the so, so the, what happens is that the, this A3, that the third component of the gluons, gets a potential at the one loop level because this A3 coupled to fermions in this way and also A3 coupled to gauge bosons. Uh, uh, in, in, oh, maybe I didn't write them. Uh, oh, yeah, here. A gauge boson right here. So, but it's a weakly coupled theory at a very small radius, so we can just do the part of the calculation and you can write down the potential for this A3. A3 is a gauge field, but uh, it's a scalar field now. And uh, the potential, this new is the fermion uh, boundary condition. Just, just look at this one. So the periodic boundary condition for fermion, you find a vacuum where the A3 is non-zero. And, uh, well, that's it. So A3 is non-zero, so it's called holonomy. And uh, it looks like it breaks this A3 and gauge symmetry, because this is a joint representation. But it's, actually, it's not. Uh, A3, what, what's, what's gauge invariant is a Wilson line, Wilson loop, to, to all of this case, uh, X3 direction, S1 direction. And if you calculate that, it, it, it is actually proportional to the unit matrix at, at this point. So the SUN is unbroken. But because A3 gets a bad, fermions uh, gets massive. The zero mode of a fermion is lifted. So the fermions are gone, and uh, gauge symmetry is unbroken. So that's the uh, thing we get. Can, sorry to slow you down, but can you, can you, I don't, this thing about the gauge symmetry being unbroken, can you explain that a little bit more, or, or no? If no, I can just ask you about it later. I mean, even though adjoint loops. Yeah, naively, yeah. that looks like yeah. it's. Yeah. yeah, but this is a gauge field. So the, this is uh, defined up to the gauge transformation. So what you should really look, look at is a gauge invariant quantity that's a uh, Wilson loop to the S1 gauge. So exponential i a3 times 2 pi r. That's the thing we should look at. That's the bit. And if you calculate that, uh, 2 pi r time cancels. And this phase times uh, a is actually, uh, if you exponentiate it, this one and this one gives you the same phase. Uh, because uh, this special value. OK, that's OK. Uh, yeah, 2 pi, the difference is actually exactly 2 pi. Mm -hmm. So the gauge symmetry is unbroken. But fermions get a bit. So then is, is that physical? So I mean the the A3, the map of A3 is physical? The case? Yeah, it so that, not that exponential i uh, integration of A3 is physical. It's gauge invariant. So it's not zero, zero but it's is, proportional to the identity operator. Right. So it is two pi over three or some right, magic yeah, yeah. value. That's right. So so yeah. So it's physical, and especially you know this fermion gets a mass because of this bed. So the fermion, uh, so you, you could say how come fermion gets a mass? It doesn't look like obeying the, the you know the SUN invariant mass. But still, we see any invariant. <laughs> but actually, again, the fermion mass shift is exactly the KK level, the same as the KK level. So shifting this one, this one gives you the same level. You know, there's a power of KK, and one of them shifted by one, and one of them shifted by minus one or something, so minus two or something. So that doesn't change the whole spectrum. The spectrum. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the whole spectrum doesn't change. But what's interesting is that uh, the theta term effect somehow very here. I didn't explain what it is, but anyway, let me just believe me that uh, that gives a shift of the KK mode in a different way for 
left-handed and right-handed. And again, as I said, in 3D, the sign of mass term is physical. If it's shifted, if it, if it goes from negative to positive, you get the effect in low energy effect, et cetera, et cetera, as a chan Simon level. So that gives actually a chan Simon level, SUNK. K is the winding number of the theta. So if theta is winding, you get a non trivial chan Simon theory at low energy. So it's a gap. Fermions are gone, even gauge bosons are gone, but still we have some topological field theory at low energy. And again, this theory is the same as this one. So this is the small, this small radius limit of QCD. This is just truth. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, that means I'm, I'm going to tell you non-truth thing. <laughs> it's just a <laughs> fact. <laughs> Let me say something more fact. Uh, that that, that's good, because <laughs> it'll be more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so large radius limit. So again, as I said, large radius, we know that the theory, what, what, what the theory we should analyze, that's a chiral kind of Lagrangian. So it's a you know, theory of pions, and uh, for a moment I, I introduced eta as a overall phase. But eta is massive, very massive. This is a mass term for eta. It doesn't look mass time, but it's a mass time for eta. And the theta information is attached to the theta. The eta shift is associated with theta bar, theta shift. So this is the effective Lagrangian to include this theta term in the chiral Lagrangian. Again, this is a fact. So <laughs> what, this is a starting point. And we just analyze what, what's going to happen if you have a winding of theta in that one, this one compact background. And you can write down that uh, equation of motion for this theta. That is usually, you know, prime boson type equation, but we have this theta phase associated with this. So if you change, eta, eta is eta prime in your language program. Anyway, it's an overall phase. Eta shift can be uh, absorbed by theta shift. So that's a usual story. But what's interesting is that, uh, okay, let's assume that eta is very heavy. We are within the effective theory. You know, eta is not dynamical, it's very heavy. Then the equation of motion tells you that this factor uh, must be zero or small. Then we are on the background where the theta is winding. That means eta also gets winding if you are within the effective state. So that in this background, eta meson gets winding. That means if you go around the eta, the value of eta is shifted by this factor, this amount. Does this really have real physical meaning? I mean, in, in large N, mm -hmm. eta is light, and it makes sense to right. think about it in the effective theory. But mm -hmm. if NC is not large, it doesn't. So why are you, eta is not light, why are you including, why are you including that, not the rho? Is this really? No, just to catch the effect of theta. But we are not actually including eta, it's because we are not. Uh, what, we, what we are doing is just, you know, what, where is the vacuum? And the eta, eta looks, uh, well. It just seems like because eta is heavy, there should be a more legitimate way of doing whatever you're going to get from this, you should be able to get it without. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, maybe your favorite way is to eliminate theta by the shift of eta and just ignore it. And that, that, you can get the same result. So let me just tell you, what's the, what's the physical meaning of this eta yeah, point? Yeah. Then uh, you can see what I'm doing. So under this background, the low energy physics has an effect through the best sumi no witten term in 4D. So in best sumi no witten term, a part of it you can write down like this. So this A is the external gauge field coupled to the current like photon. So in the basis minority term, if you look at the textbook, you have, you see that this kind of term appears. And then if eta has winding, this gives you uh, effective theta term for this external gauge field, like photon. Or 
in, in the base where we don't have eta, we just have this eta from the beginning. That's probably the better way. To <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, that, there's a theta FF dual term for photons. So that, again, this is a fact. <laughs> Nothing. Uh, uh, this is just a, this time is there. And uh, so what's interesting is that once you integrate over this S1 direction, this becomes just a winding number, 2 pi times winding number. That gives you the, the 3D you know, chance time on like time uh, uh, in the 3D theory. So we get some 3D basis mean of time after integrating uh, this S1 direction. So from here, we can actually see the value equal to monopole relation here. Because the chance time on time, let's say this is photon. And this is then magnetic field. And the photon, A0 component of photon, should couple to the charge density. A0 should couple to charge density. And charge density is magnetic field. So this is the monopole. Monopole has charge one, for example. But so let's say this is the baryon number. Baryon number the U1 part. Again, the baryon number is the baryon magnetic field. So the magnetic field is actually related to the baryon number in, this, uh, uh, in the presence of this term. Again, this is the fact. Once you have theta winding, winding theta term at low energy, baryon number is carried by monopoles. Why did it require winding? Your Which last, one? Your last argument. Why did it need winding? Oh, because if this is zero, it's just zero. At low energy, you need some winding. Uh, to, to get some non-zero result at low energy, you, you need some winding. So eta is winding is very important. Or winding theta from the beginning. It's just an axion photon photon coupling, actually. So <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. And if axion is winding, baryon becomes monopole. Or more politics, but that's a fact. <laughs> yes. Wow. The time is getting tight. But anyway, what, what I found is that the, the okay, this side I optimized. So, so QCD, and, and take K equal to NF, the winding rate is NF times. Then at a small radius limit, that, that we found the theory to be SUN with chance time on level NF. So that's the theory. It's gapped, so no degree of freedom, topological efficiency. And the large R, then what you find is that the mass is pi ions, but with some non trivial basis mean of time appears at low energy. So this is the uh, low energy limit of these two theories. Uh, and uh, because these are different theories, one gap and one not gap. There must be phase transition. So, in a, if you change the radius <coughs> from big to small, at some point, massless pi should disappear and it becomes a topological field theory. So that that's the thing. So there must be some phase transition. And what's interesting that those two limit of the theory is exactly the same as a 3D theory. So again, I'm matching 3D theory to 3D theory, so this is no uh, you know, jump in, the, in the, uh, logic. It's, it, I'm just comparing the 3D SEN not theory with two NF fermions, and I add some some express breaking down, but it's not very important. But anyway, uh, in this theory, we can say that uh, we, uh, the according to phase diagram. Uh, for large fermion mass, we get this theory, and small fermion mass, we get this. So exactly the same theory appears in a 3D UIP. In this way, I think the, these two theories are actually related. And uh, what's interesting is that in the 3D side, we have a dual theory, which is a UNF theory with scalar field. So the Higgs mechanism of this theory describes this phase transition. It's uh, something like lambda but we know exactly what it is in this case. And uh, so the, from here, it's a speculation. So because we found the same theory in the, in the, as a limit, we can expect this one. So maybe our QCD on this funny background 
there's a phase transition. That was the truth. But that the phase trans near the phase transition, the, the effective theory may be also this one because it's the same physics. So that's the speculation. And why that is interesting is my favorite thing is that uh, okay, first of all, uh, tidal symmetry breaking may be described as the Higgs mechanism of UNF gate theory. And that is already something related topic. There is something related topic that is a similar picture in 4D QCD where the gauge bosons are low and omega mechanism. So it's called hidden local symmetry. So the UNF gauge theory is uh, kind of nicely uh, uh, matches to the uh, low and omega meson system in our world. So what I'm saying is that uh, we have low and omega meson in the spectrum. That may really be the dual gauge boson of group. That may be the case. And at least it is, gives consistent phase diagram. And uh, Victor Mason that gauge boson has been studied in the first uh, trial uh, in the 60s. And, uh, there are many. Uh, Actually, there's Diamond Mills proposed that. Uh, Ah, that's true. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I think Jan Mills tried to understand these fields as a gauge field, uh, but they have a mass. <laughs> well, Sakurai, I think, spelled out that maybe a Higgs, well, not Higgs in this case, <laughs> maybe uh, related to, yeah, what is that? Well, anyway. <laughs> he, 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 Suggested to, to try to understand the, the, the victims of the gauge laws. And later it is uh, the Lagrangian written, and of course it goes to the, the business of holographic QCD. So, if that speculation is true, this is. Uh, the, so, let me explain exactly what the speculation is. So, at the large radius, so, yeah. Sorry, can I, before, before you talk about, so what, what does this really mean? Because, you know, at the, when, you, when you say that this, there's this 3D transition, mm -hmm. right, um, between these, the, 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 this, in, in 3D, the transition between these two theories is described by this effective theory. But, um, let's see, I'm confused because if you say that it's somehow described by that all along, the thing, if I'm looking on the left, mm -hmm. the transition is sort of by definition happening when the theory is not 3D, isn't it? Because the you're right between the large and small radius. So mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, what does it even mean that that transition is controlled by some three-dimensional theory? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm going to Okay, that's what you're going to explain. Okay, but sorry. I'm not sure if it, you can be happy with that. But anyway, <laughs> let me try to explain what... What's the picture? So large, large radius, we know that there's a massless pion and there's some spectrum of hadrons, a lot of things going on. And uh, what I'm thinking is that, uh, okay, at the, near the critical radius, of course the massless pions are massless pions. But also there's a rho and omega. But this is a KK spectrum now. The KK modes, and uh, maybe at a similar mass, but the rho and omega is there. And uh, so because both are now QCD scale, so this kind of situation can happen, right? So the KK modes, uh, and, and this system, this subsystem, this is because this is KK decomposed, so it's three-dimensional theory. So this system may be described as a Higgs theory. This rho and omega and the massless pi and the other scalar mechanism form a you know, UNF gauge theory where the gauge bosons are rho and omega. So that's the picture I'm having in mind. So people have, have, have speculated mm -hmm. that maybe, for example, at large N C, mm -hmm. the rho and omega could be light, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. People have speculated things yeah. like that. I mean, do you did you think about large N C at all to see if any of these yeah, things unfortunately are more the, the precise or something? N is here, and uh, right. large N is infinitely heavy in it actually. Oh, okay. But uh, gauge coupling for rho and omega is one over N, mm -hmm. so they actually that may cancel. But still, I think 
there's no parametric way to separate this one away from the other. So that's why I'm writing this line <laughs> close to this one. But anyway, this subsystem, what I'm proposing is that this subsystem is actually a UNFK theory in this case. So that, that's the. It doesn't. The Higgs bad vanish at the critical point. Yes, it does vanish. That's the that's the conjecture. But still, actually, you know, this guy gives you a mass. Um, chance I'm level give you a mass, so that it doesn't become a massless. Still massive, but uh, not in the Higgs space. So the at small radius, you know, the the pion disappear and rho and omega stays here. So the, the theory is described as rho and omega meson, but still massive, but, but the topological field theory remains. So that's the, uh, so the, this is, this part of the theory is dual to gluons. So the rho and omega becomes really uh, uh, gluons, uh, the dual theory of gluons. The Wilson line of this one is the same as this one. This one. The Wilson line of rho meson is the same as this one line of gluons. So that's the, and uh, there's an interesting story about barium. I don't think I have time. Uh, well, let me see a little bit. So barions are barions, of course, in a, in a large radius. It's a barion, a barium, proton, and neutron. But uh, near the critical radius, as I said, the magnetic line becomes a barium. So the uh, magnetic line of rho and omega, that's a vortex. Vortex of rho and omega can be a barium. So barium number is carried by this string-like object. But uh, there shouldn't be such thing. <laughs> no, I don't see any string-like object here. So probably there must be a something, some monopole to cut this string in the full spectrum. But uh, the story is a bit interesting because this string carries the barium number. So the monopole and the antimonopole cannot cut this string because baryon numbers should be kept. So actually, the, the, there's a nice paper by Zoha recently that uh, actually some, some fancy you know, <laughs> configuration of eta can carry the baryon number. So that story actually matches to this picture. The low and omega string is there, monopole can cut the string, but uh, that gives you some some remnant uh, storytonic object made by eta and that form of value. So, so actually, rho and omega string can, can decay into value. So that may be the uh, Anyway, because I don't have time. But anyway, I, because that, those are speculations, and I'm trying to understand in the language of holography, because in the holography, rho and omega is already a gauge boson. That's a good starting point to, to, to discuss that. And uh, that is indeed a nice picture that uh, in a holographic QC you can, can do the deconstruction and uh, the cut, the link, cutting the link gives you a Higgs mechanism, unHigs mechanism that uh, uh, make, this make, uh, make the, the pions uh, disappear by cutting the links. And that, is to the, the, the effective theory, the chance I'm well, I don't explain anything, but anyway, the deconstruct version of holographic model can actually be the basis of this uh, phase transition. So <laughs> let me summarize what we are talking about. So in QCD, there must be a phase transition. This is truth. <laughs> phase transition between large and small radius of S1. This is independent of whether we have winding or not. In any case, we, we must have phase transition. And the phase transition region may be described by this UNFK theory. So this is, first of all, consistent as a low, uh, by looking at the low energy effective theory and the global symmetry and so on. But, but uh, and then what's the, what's the uh, candidate for this gauge boson that is naturally the rho and omega meson. So that's a very nice, uh, uh, I think, uh, package uh, of describing the phase transition region of QCD. And the holographic picture may be the basis of that, because UNF group is there already. And uh, 
and discussion works for k less than n n. k is the winding number of data. So let me tell you a little bit about k equal to zero case. K equal to zero is the most interesting point where we don't have any winding. That's really the QCD. And uh, S1 compactification, you can think of that as a, a finite temperature system. So it's really our QCD at finite temperature. If our, my picture is really correct and remains true at k equal to zero, then rho and omega must get massless at the critical point because there's no chance I'm on level now. And picks uh, fix mechanism give you a zero mass for rho and omega at the critical temperature. And uh, yeah, so, so that's the thing. So that kind of thing should be tested about by the lattice QCD. So that's something I'm trying to motivate lattice people to, to measure the vector two-point function on the lattice <laughs> at the critical. OK, let me summarize. So, so, the, uh, so this holographic one, I didn't explain it, but uh, it's a good candidate of the NGL nonlinear phenotype model to discuss the chiral phase term. It's just a Higgs mechanism. But it's not just a Higgs mechanism. It's a UNF gauge theory as a, uh, to describe the phase transition region. And there's anomaly matching in 4D is fine, of course, because it's holographic QCD. And also the dry energy physics limit we can check and the same as QCD. So it's a, it's a good candidate. And it's, it must be qualitatively different from the conventional, like uh, non linear senior type models. And especially we have gauge field in the theory. And, uh, you know, and also in the topological confining phase of the critical. So that's uh, something, I think, new ingredient uh, for understanding the, the phase transition of QC. Thank you. Just a, a, a random thought, because maybe this doesn't make sense, but you know, it, it still sort of bothers me that you're trying to make uh, a statement that this transition between small and large radius is in some sense governed by a 3D theory. That just seems conceptually kind of mysterious. So, but one thing I was wondering is that, um, uh, you know, nothing you talked about seemed to depend very much mm -hmm. on the precise profile of, of theta, right? Mm -hmm. um, but one thing that you could do, you could imagine doing, is you could imagine making it <coughs> jump mm -hmm. in a very small spatial region in the third direction, mm -hmm. right? Then you would really have like a brain there. Yeah. So then you would really have a three-dimensional object in your yes. theory. Mm -hmm. And then it, I was just, it's just a guess that maybe some of these things could be made more precise in that yeah. way. Right, that there could be degrees of freedom localized on that defect, yeah. whatever you want to call it, yeah, yeah. brain. That so could it's been be, studied actually. That's been studied. Okay. Yeah, but kind of I'm taking opposite uh, because so if you have a sudden jump of theta, you can't ignore eta. Because uh, eta should jump different domains. So eta has actually, the potential of eta has many domains. Uh, there's a cusp in between. And uh, jumping theta means that the eta must be also jumping to different domains. That's actually the origin of the, the, the interface theory. And which is known to be really UNF case theory, chance theory. So theory. So that's the one attitude you can take. The very sharp jump of the theta, you have an interface that, on, on that you have UNF uh, theory. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't say anything about the wrong things. <laughs> so what I wanted to make is, okay, the smooth changing the function of theta, still we can analyze. And if phase function is smooth enough, somebody must be the gauge boson, right? <laughs> If you are this true, so that that's somebody I I identified as a raw omega because that's no other thing. But uh, of course, there's uh, many assumptions on it. First of all, the, if the phase transition is first order, then it's not 
you know, just stop well, to be honest, what bothers me more is, is not the much, the much the fact that there are assumptions, mm -hmm. but the fact that the statement mm -hmm. itself is not very crisp. Right? Ah. Because you're telling me that some part of the spectrum, mm -hmm. but it's not really, it's not in I'm any way decoupled from okay. the rest, yeah, yeah, is yeah. described by, you see what I mean? So I know. Much more That's the reason why I wanted to have full four, four, four dimensions full four-dimensional picture yeah. that I skipped. So that's why I wanted to have this uh, holographic picture. This is really a four-dimensional system. Yeah. So we can really talk about what's going on. It, it is already effective theory and, uh, you know. But uh, again, this is just a model. It's one model to, to realize the uh, duality. The model is that uh, the part of the Romesson really gets massless in the Fourier language. Usually, what chiral symmetry break, chiral symmetry restoration means that we cut the LR symmetry breaking part, so that uh, you know what this I mean. Right? Yeah. So the the all, all the gauge boson is one of the links that then the pion disappears. So that's the chiral symmetry restoration. Usually, the value of this one sent to zero. That's the chiral symmetry. But if you cut this one and this one, one gauge boson remains massless. So that, that can actually give you a low energy effective theory as the chance I'm more theory. So that's one of the possibility of the pattern of chiral symmetry restoration at the high temperature. So I'm all small But anyway. As I said, <laughs> this part is speculation. I mean, from this part, it's all speculations. Uh, but uh, what I'm saying is that, uh, uh, yeah, well, it, it is a concrete statement that if rho and omega have a mass term only from the chan Simon level, that's a chan Simon theory <laughs> at low energy. So that, that's the, my uh, conjecture. Rho and omega actually becomes, uh, goes into the topological phase. So we have a Higgs phase, confining phase, and topological phase in the theory. And my, my conjecture is that rho and omega actually is in Higgs phase now, but if you change the radius to small, it becomes, goes into the topological phase. So that's the, the conjecture. People usually think that rho and omega just stays at the, the Higgs space, right? just heavy gauge boson, heavy big terms, heavy big but No, uh, in my case, rho and omega actually goes into the topological phase rather than the Higgs space. That's the conjecture. And uh, how to test, that's a different question, a difficult question, so I, I'm thinking of how to test that kind of Go to the Hosatani slide. Hosatani slide. It's my slide. Okay. So if you turned on quark, a regular quark mass, uh -huh. would you still be at this gauge? Magic it, now it depends on the mass. Yeah, but mass is light enough and it stays up here. At some point, I think uh, this. this but becomes the real minimum when mass is heavy. So at the Yamil theory, I think this is the minimum. And in supersymmetric theories, it goes someplace else because. So the parsimonic phase, I think, this is free. I don't know, even more difficult thing happens for that. There's a joint fermion. Uh, yeah, I think it is free. This one is free. Not exactly, but at this point becomes the minimum. So that breaks the gauge symmetry to you want. Oh, I see. When you do finite temperature, don't you cut the second picture? Yeah, this picture is. This is the finite temperature. 
But finite temperature, this is the minimum. But uh, again, because of these fermions are almost. So the low, low energy effective period are getting the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, uh, and L and R and R and yeah, yeah, that I didn't explain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the most important thing. Right? But uh, well, you can eliminate this data, yeah. and that appears here. Yeah. This is uh, in the current. Yeah. And the uh, winding of this guy is for them. Yeah. And that's the end. So, so I secretly redefine the field so that this one is zero. Uh, but we have some winding in, the, in this, this term. Okay. That gives you a mass term uh, for Fermi, mass shift of the Fermi. And uh, what's important is that the uh, this guy is has uh, so theta equal to n f means m a equal to one and m r equal to zero or minus one, whatever. So that one of the fermion level is shifted. Mm -hmm. That shift gives you a chance I mean, level because of the by by integrating out the fermions. Mm -hmm. Of course, you can work in a basis where this is non-zero and this is zero. And then it just directly gives you a chance I remember. Mm. Okay, this part is a bit tricky because I'm writing a right here. So the integration on this one is tricky when, when you have a winding. And some, some counter term is to be added, and that gives you the, the chance I remember. So that's a bit complicated. But anyway, the result is the same. Any other questions? All right. Let's thank the chair again.